Well, I converted because I just feel a lot more comfortable in the Democratic Party, a lot more welcoming, uh, a lot more kind, um, much more tolerant. Uh, it's a big tent, if you will, uh, rather than the Republican Party, which seems to be becoming a pup tent. And tell us a little bit about uh, what you see on the national level uh, for, uh, for Democrats and Republicans. Well, I see a very bright future uh, for the Democratic Party. I really do. Um, the demographics are very good, as we all know. Um, we're going to have more and more immigrants come into the country. Minorities are continuing to grow uh, throughout the country. Uh, and I think that bodes well for the Democratic Party, uh, both nationally and here in Louisiana and my home of Florida. What recommendations are you going to give to Louisiana Democrats? Just work hard. Um, you know, be upbeat, be positive, uh, and utilize common sense. Um, there seems to be not enough common sense in government these days. This is such a fantastic gathering of Democrats, over a thousand. Uh, moving our party, which we celebrate from Baton Rouge to New Orleans, was a great idea. Lots of people love, of course, coming to the city, and so it attracts a broad cross-section. Our party is very unified. Uh, we want to reach out to independents and Republicans who might be dissatisfied with what they're hearing in Washington and come to a party that's got uh, a big tent for everyone. We believe in compromise. We believe in practical politics. We believe in working across the aisle to get things done for our people. Stronger education, investments in higher ed, um, stronger health care system so working people can afford and have the security of knowing that if they get sick they can get help. You know, Democrats are really for, you know, building a strong middle class. And I think some Republicans in Washington have lost their way. They're talking about things that absolutely put no food on the table for anyone. And we're talking about a lot of macaroni and cheese issues here, as my friend Barbara Mikulski would say. There's a big issue with uh, flood insurance. What's yeah. the latest on that? Well, our delegation is united. I mean, I'm leading the effort, um, but with the Republicans and Democrats in our district to fix something. Now, Congress should never have passed this bill. I tried to send up warnings and flags before it was done, but, you know, it was a little bit too late. So Congress has to change the law, and in the meantime, which we're working on, but we need a lot of support to do it, in the meantime, we're going to try to get the administration to push back or to delay and to get FEMA to push back and to delay some of these rules and regulations because it's really just completely unaffordable for working middle-class families in Louisiana that are not living in condos, we're not sunning on the beach, you know, we are shrimping, crabbing, you know, fishing for a living, uh, operating oil and gas rigs offshore, and we live and work in these places because we have to and we want to. And it just, this, this new flood insurance, Bigger Waters, doesn't work for us. And Louisiana is unique, and we expect a unique solution, so we're going to fight hard to find it. Energy is a big issue in Louisiana. Tell us a little bit about the Senate Energy Committee. Well, should I be uh, fortunate enough to be reelected, I'll be the chair of the Energy and Natural Resources Committee in the United States Senate. It will be the first time in over 24 years that our state has had a chairmanship, has held that gavel either in the House or the Senate. And I intend to use it on behalf of pro-drilling states like Louisiana to produce more oil and gas, not less to invest in technologies to minimize the environmental footprint, but to be proud of this industry so we can get more drilling on private land and public land offshore and on. And of course, my primary uh, focus is going to be securing a full portion of revenue sharing. We have a half a portion. We need a full portion, and I've worked on this, and we're making a lot of you know, progress and success because that's the money we need to invest in our coast year after year to secure Homa and Thibodeau and Plaquemine and Boothville. And we've just got to find those resources to build levees that won't break and to restore our marsh to give us the protection we need. Are you encouraged by everything you've seen and heard here tonight? Yes, I am. I mean, it's going to be a great night. And, you know, with all of the changes or some of the changes that have gone on with people moving and switching from party, you know, Democrats still have 48 percent of registered voters in Louisiana, about 32 percent independent. So, you know, we're close to 70, you know, 70 percent or 28 percent independent, you know, close to 70 percent that are not <laughs> have not signed up with uh, with the Washington Republicans and are still looking for, you know, 
pragmatic, compromise, middle of the road strategies to, like I said, invest in middle class families and, and honor our citizens after a lifetime of work to not pull the rug out from underneath them uh, with their Social Security or their Medicare. I think, you know, Democrats, you know, I've only been chair for a little over a year now, and I've just seen such a phenomenal change in interest and perspective and um, hope uh, for what Louisiana could be. I mean, and so this is an opportunity for us to share our story, share our values, and to get pumped up and ready and powered up and ready to win. What's it going to take uh, to, to be competitive uh, at the state level? Yeah, and so we're going to be, well, first of all, in 2014, it's going to be very easy because we have a woman who is currently serving in the United States Senate as an incumbent who has just been simply doing her job. And it doesn't matter about the partisan politics while we are here to advocate democratic values and principles. Uh, Mary Landrieu stands up for Louisiana citizens all across the board every day that she's in Washington. She just does her job. She has uh, the opportunity in the next um, Congress to serve as the chair of the Energy Committee, the Senate Energy Committee. We haven't had that from Louisiana since Bennett Johnson 24 years ago. And so that opportunity in and of itself with the oil and gas industry and the wonderful natural resources that we have um, is enough of a reason for folks to go to the poll, we think, and send her back. But, you know, so there's no question in 2014 we're going to be competitive. We're going to use that momentum in 2014 after Mary wins to make sure that we get a Democratic governor in 2015. We cannot afford the callous, um, irresponsible leadership that's been offered by the Republican Party for the last six years. That has to change. Louisiana citizens are tired. If you look at the polls, they're not pleased with this administration. And so our efforts are going to be in furtherance of getting um, not only a governor, but other statewides that share what we believe are the values of Louisiana middle class families. So You've got an open seat now in the 5th Congressional District in North Louisiana. Yeah, we're excited about that. And we've got at least two candidates right now and uh, possibly three. So we're very excited about that and the opportunity. Um, you know, the incumbent who's now resigned and gone on to take a, a job with the Jindal administration, uh, Rodney Alexander, ran as a Democrat 10 years ago. And so that district, in our opinion, looking at the numbers, is something that's quite viable and definitely doable. And we're going after it. I'm excited. I'm optimistic. I think the people of Louisiana have come to understand, especially over the last couple or three years, that it's the Democrats who are fighting to put Louisiana first, um, putting our school children first, our teachers first, our seniors first, small businesses. Uh, we're fighting in the legislature and in Baton Rouge. We're, we're actually having some victories. Of course, it's not enough to fight against things. We actually have to re regain our power of strength so that we can actually propose affirmative measures as well. Uh, but we have limited the damage that Bobby Jindal's been able to do to Louisiana, especially with respect to having the highest sales tax in the nation, the most regressive tax structure in the nation. Democrats said no, and he gave up on that the first day of the session. It was Democrats who fought to get $69 million additional funding for our school children, which was the first new investment in K-12 education in five years. It happened because we said it had to happen or otherwise it wouldn't be a budget. So we're putting our school kids first. Half of that money is going to go to school teachers for pay raises. So we're putting our teachers first. Uh, we're fighting for our seniors. We're fighting for the people who matter in Louisiana as opposed to what our governor's doing, and that is putting himself, his ambition, ahead of the people that he governs.